कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे सो नाउ वी गो टू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट 20 वर्सेस वर्सेस 11 थ्रू 30 दिस इज कॉल्ड संख्या और एनालाइजिंग और काउंटिंग एनालाइजिंग सो दिस इज द 20 वर्सेस व्हिच डिस्क्राइब्स द डिफरेंस बिटवीन बॉडी soul matter spirit that which is temporary and that which is eternal in these 20 verses so now krishna be actually begins his instructions in bhagavad gita are you ready okay follow along the supreme personality of god had said while speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. And by the way, this is basically what Hiranyakashipu told his relatives after his brother died at the funeral ceremony. I know it's amazing. Hiranyakashipu was speaking this kind of Bhagavad Gita Sankhya philosophy to all his relatives. But like a demon politician, he didn't believe one word of it. Because after speaking like this, then he said, I'm going to kill Vishnu. Which means he didn't understand the thing he was saying. That's a politician for you. They speak good, but actually they don't believe anything. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. Next point. Never was there a time when I did not exist. Who's speaking? Krishna. Krishna. Never was there a time I did not exist. So that means Krishna what? Krishna. He always existed. Nor you, nor all these kings. Are we included in that? Yes. yes. So you always existed. This verse of Bhagavad Gita is liberating. You always existed. Not the you you see in the mirror. The real you. Which we're going to find out about. You always existed. Nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. So that's why there's no need to lament. Because nobody actually dies. What dies? The body. Just like you probably already, some of you already had two, three, four different automobiles. When the first automobile was no longer usable, did you cry? Ooh. No, you got a better one. Right? You got a better one. You don't, you don't worry about, oh yeah, I really like that Hyundai. That was really great. No, now you got a better car. So in the same way, you don't lament anyone dying because it's just the body. They got it. Well, if they got a worse body, yeah, then you can feel bad for them. But if they got a worse body, it meant they deserved it. Right? But if you're a good person, good person is going to get a better body in the next life. So the main thing is, are you good or are you bad? Are you like Arjuna or are you like Duryodhan? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Because if you're good, then you're getting a better body. Great. What? Fantastic. But if you're bad, you're getting a very bad body. But then don't lament because, hey, the guy deserved it. Okay, let's continue. So neither in the future shall any of us. So we always lived in the past. We live now and we will continue to live in the future. There is no death. It's an illusion. Death is just like going to sleep and then waking up. When you go to sleep at night, you lay down, and when you wake up, 
you wake up in the same body. When you die, you go to sleep, but you wake up in a different body. So death is just like sleeping. You don't worry about going to sleep, do you? Because you know you're going to get up. So death, this means instead of waking up in this body, I'm going to wake up in another body. That's all. Hurry bowl. No need to worry. So annihilation is also one of them. Annihilation of the body. No, the annihilation of the world. Yeah, this still the soul doesn't. Still the soul doesn't die. No, this is one of the, uh, also one of them is like a sleeping mode. Yes, because the souls that are not fit to enter the spiritual sky enter the body of no, no. Uh, uh, Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu, and they go to sleep. For a long time, for Brahm, for Mahavishnu's breath, and then when he exhales, everybody get, comes out, awakens in their new next body, like Narada. Narada explained to Vyasadeva, "I gave up my Sudra body, and I came out the next time when Brahma was creating. But now I had this Narada Muni body, transcendental." And I can go anywhere I want. And it was just like that. Boom. Let us continue. So next verse. As the embodied soul continually passes in this body. From boyhood to youth to old age. The soul similarly passes into another body at death. Yes. You had a. F so how old is your daughter? All right. We all had five-year-old bodies. Now you have 20, 30, 40, 50, 60-year-old bodies. It's the same you, but you've just gone through different, shall we say, upgrades, like the operating system. Windows, Windows 3, Windows 95, Windows this, that, the other thing. So, you had five-year-old, ten, etc. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. So that's what it means. Becoming a devotee means becoming sober. That's what being a devotee is. How do you get sober? With knowledge and with sense control, you become sober. You become wise. You become transcendental. You become peaceful. You're not freaked out by the changes. You realize. That's why transcendental knowledge is the most valuable thing you can acquire. Most people don't have transcendental knowledge. So when the tragedy comes, they freak out. But someone who has transcendental knowledge... Calamities come, different things come, but because you have that transcendental knowledge, you're able to weather the storm. So best thing you can do, acquire transcendental knowledge. And at what age did Prahlad recommend acquiring transcendental knowledge? Five, Five years old. And therefore you are a good parent. You have your children coming here hearing transcendental knowledge just like when my daughter was in the womb of Varuni Varuni used to read Krishna book every day and then when Mitravinda was born and growing up at this age every day Varuni would have a big picture book and Varuni would say this is Yashoda who's this Prabhupada who is this? Krishna. And still Varuni was reading Krishna book. Now my daughter is over 40 years. I can still ask her. So what happened in this story of Krishna book? Boom. She remembers it. Why? She was trained in the womb. So trained. Remember we were speaking last time? Your son up until 16. Right? So keep training them keep hammering transcendental knowledge 
Your boys have been with me since, most of them since birth, right? How old was Mukund in 1994? How old were you, Mukund? One. So all your sons have been with me all these years. They must have learned something. Mukund, Amadov, who's the Supreme Personality Godhead? Yep. <laughs> you pass your examination. So you have to keep acquiring transcendental knowledge. Huh? Who? Is he devotee? Okay, okay, no fighting here now. Hey, hey. <laughs> we'll discuss later. All right. Key point here, transcendental knowledge. Okay, one thing I want to say. In my Guru Maharaj was uh, doing the PhD in the UCI. He became, uh, he was a Initiated. He initiated in, uh, I don't know what it was, but somehow he connected with the Laguna Beach and early temple to the Prabhupada. So they become Krishna consciousness and then he become saint and scientist, uh, right? Saint and scientist, right? So one day they will also become, but don't too much, you know. <laughs> Keep Only you have to pray. Pray. Okay. Always okay. pray. Every day you should pray to Krishna. Please protect my three sons. Don't let them fall into Maya. Simple prayer. Every day. You're on Laguna Beach altar how many days? Three days. You're right there. Okay. You're right there. So while you're worshiping the deities, you can be praying. You're doing the incense. Please protect my sons. Please protect. <laughs> Take advantage of Krishna has given you. Yeah, keep doing it. Keep doing it. They got a long way to go, these boys. I can only do so much. I only see them once a week. So, big thing on you. Big responsibility. Jai. O son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception, O scion of Barta, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. So this is what life teaches us, learning how to be Tolerant, as Lord Chaitanya says, more tolerant than the tree who has to tolerate the scorching heat, the blistering winds, the heavy rain, people coming and taking flowers and fruits and twigs, cutting it. The tree tolerates, tolerates. We have to tolerate so many things. Our neighbors, our husband, our wife, our sons, we have to tolerate. What's that? Even your own mind, yes, you have to tolerate. And the body. What? About the Bharat, the name Ashwan of Bharat. What is, I don't know, that's why I have to ask you. Why you have to be connected with the Bharat? Because. Their great great ancestor was named Bharat, but not the Bharat of Jada Bharat and the son of King Rishabdev. This is explained in ninth canto. There was another Bharat, and when he was born, he had the mark of the Sudarshan Chakra on his palm. So this was a different Bharat, and he is the great ancestor of this dynasty. It's mentioned in ninth canto. Okay, different from Jada Bharat and Maharaj Rishabdev. Different. What's that? Dushanta. Yes. That is the one. Yes. See, this is why this is good group. Very knowledgeable, transcendental knowledge. Very good. Dushant and Shukuntala. Yes. And one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. O best among men, Arjuna, 
the person who was not disturbed by happiness and distress and who is steady in both is certainly eligible for liberation. And what would be the utmost test of one being not disturbed? What's the utmost test? That's not a test. What is the test? The question is, what is the utmost test? What's that? Death. Death. Yes, that's the test. The test is the time of death. Can you what? Remember Krishna. That's it. That's the test. Why are we doing japa? So that at the time of death, Hare Krishna. Why are we doing devotional service? Practice. Prat Govind. Practice. Right? Practice. Practice. You're not practicing bouncing a ball. We're practicing this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. That's why we chant. Practice. So that the time of death. And not only that, even we may not be able to chant, we may not remember. But if we have done years and years and years of devotional service, Krishna, Lord Chaitanya, they will remember you. They will help at the time of death. There's a story I read. One of my god brothers, he had fallen into Maya. He was for some time a prominent devotee and then he fell into Maya. But at his deathbed, Prabhupada came to him like a vision. And the devotee said, my God. And Prabhupada said, yes, because you did service for me, even though you have gone away, I have come at this time of death. And he was still alive, so he told someone, Prabhupada has come at this time. So, do keep doing your devotional service. Keep faithful to Krishna because no matter what, all your devotional service accumulates. You have an account. You have your account. And all your devotional activities is being recorded and nobody can touch that account. Now they just had this thing in England. So everybody's worried about their 401k. The, the currency of London, England has gone like dramatic. Everybody's like freaking out. That'll never happen to your devotional account. It does never decreases. It's always there. So you come to Namahat, that only goes into your account. Even your two children coming to Namahat, this is going into their account right now. Yes, it's not a joke. It's the real thing. Yes? That's right, exactly. Very good, Manakshi. Yes. Let us continue. Those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non-existent, the material body, there is no endurance. And of the eternal, the soul, there is no change. This they have concluded by studying the nature of both. So. This word non-existent has to be explained because everybody knows, well, it exists now, right? Don't you have a material body? So why does it say non-existent? It says non-existent because from this angle of vision, existence means something which is eternal. Something which is eternal is said to exist and that which is not eternal is called non-existent you understand it's a relative it's relative to this context by definition existence means something which is eternal when they say non-existent that means temporary we all know the body is temporary but the body is not eternal therefore in the Vedic literatures is considered non-existent or the synonym is temporary. Whereas the soul 
eternally exists, which we already decided in the past, present, and future. The soul, the body it did not live, thousand, not this body. You had a body, but not this body. This they have concluded by studying the nature of both. That which pervades the entire body, you should know to be indestructible. So, there, as Prabhupada explains, Prabhupada is, re, uh, Krishna and Prabhupada are saying, consciousness. Consciousness is what pervades the entire body. If I come with a pin and stick you in the toe, you feel it. Why? Because you're conscious. Unless the doctor puts in something, like when I was like seven years old, I had an ingrown toenail. So my father took me to the doctor and they had to cut my toe. But before he cut the toe, he took a big needle and numbed my foot. And I was at seven years old, I was watching the doctor with a scalpel cutting my toe. But I didn't feel anything because the consciousness was blocked. If he did that now, hey, right? Because I, I have the consciousness. So, and Prabhupada explains, consciousness is the symptom of the soul's presence. That is actually the only way we know that the soul exists is because of the presence of consciousness. This microphone, this computer does not have consciousness. It's a machine like the body. But this machine is animated because of the presence of the soul and super soul and both of them have consciousness, awareness, being. That which pervades the entire body you should know to be indestructible. No one is able to destroy that imperishable soul. So in these verses, Krishna is delineating the difference between body and soul, uh, eternal, temporary, um, matter and spirit from different angles of vision. Now he continues, the material body of the indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal living entity is sure to come in, to an end. So what comes to an end? Body. The body. Not the indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal living entity. Therefore fight, O descendant of Bharat. And neither he who thinks the living entity the slayer, nor he who thinks it slain is in knowledge. For the self slays not, nor is slain. In other words, the soul itself is not actually doing anything. The soul has given power of attorney over to the mind, and the mind and senses are acting, but the soul itself is not actually doing anything in the material realm. This is another teaching from the Vedas. The soul actually does not, it actually is different from the material energy. But the soul has given power of attorney over to the mind. And so the soul thinks, I am man. I am this body. I am woman. I am American. The soul is thinking that. And that's why it's called illusion. It is illusion to think I am this. That's an illusion because I'm not this body. But I think and act that I am. Self-realization is the point where you no longer consider I am this body. You act differently. You think I am soul. I belong to Krishna. And therefore I must serve Krishna. That's the pure devotee. The pure devotee does not think in terms of the body. The devote, pure devotee thinks in terms of service to Krishna. Gradually, you're coming to that stage, little by little. 
because you're in the practice stage. When you've learned your lessons, automatically you're always serving Krishna. Automatically. It just becomes your nature to serve Krishna. Let us continue. Neither he who thinks the living entity the slayer, nor he thinks it is slain is in knowledge. For the self slays not, nor is slain. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death at any time. He has not come into being, nor does not come into being, and will not come into being, because he is. That's the difference. You're not coming in, you, you already are. How? Eternally, past, present, and future. He is unborn. Okay, you're not born. You're eternal, ever existing, and primeval. With this word primeval means ancient. How ancient? Since time immemorial. Oh, and same thing for Krishna, same for God. God always existed, and so also you. You always existed. It's a far out concept. If you actually grasp it, it's very liberating. You always existed. Like the sun and the sunshine, they exist simultaneously. Who's the sun? And the sunshine? The living entities. That's exactly the example Lord Chaitanya told Sanatana Goswami. Jibera surupahai krishnara nityadas. And then the next line, pencil ray sunlight. Like the sun, there's sun rays. Each one of you is a little sun ray of Krishna. Always existed. He is not slain when the body is slain. O Partha, how can a person who knows that the soul is indestructible, eternal, unborn, and immutable kill anyone or cause anyone to kill? As a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, the soul similarly accepts new material bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. Such a nice clear example Krishna is giving. This is, Krishna is telling you how to preach to someone. This is a very good example. My korta is not me. I've had so many kurtas. And when they no longer fit, my wife no longer irons them. She throws them away and they go, what happened to that kurta? I threw it out. It doesn't fit you anymore. It had holes in it. It was time to let go. So same way, this body is like a kurta. One day, Krishna says, that's it. New body, let's go. That's death. Death means a new kurta. That's death. So how when it affects? Huh? When it affects to the another body. When does it take the next body? Yeah. Right away. Right away. No, I, I, I heard that. Then why did you ask? <laughs> because if you knew what I heard is maybe a different answer. That's why. Well, I'm telling you my answer. The next birth is right away. No, okay. Now, when is the time for the person who did a lot of uh, bad activity, whatever, the result that the time the time between this body and that body that's when you go to hell but because it's on the subtle platform it seems like millions of years but in actuality it's a second for not for this for the spiritual no 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 I'm, I'm you asked about the person going to hell yes yeah, yeah. okay i'm explaining for the person who goes to hell, it's on the subtle platform. Time is relative, yes? You understand? Time is relative. Yeah, yeah. Time on earth is different from time on the heavenly planets, yeah, yes? Different. Okay. 
So on the subtle, the going to hell means the soul along with the subtle material body. What's the subtle material body? Mind, intelligence, false ego, and contaminated consciousness. Now, that's the subtle body. So, from the time it takes from this body to the next body, it's like a nanosecond, okay? But because it's on 